Hi there, in this video we're going to talk about the anatomy of the vertebral artery. We tend to divide the vertebral artery into four separate sections. V1, from its origin at the subclavian artery. 2, the transverse foramina of the sixth cervical vertebra. V2, from the transverse foramina of the sixth cervical vertebra, all the way to... C1 here. V3 is the section that describes the length of the vertebral artery between the transverse foramina of the first cervical vertebra and the point at which the vertebral artery pierces the meninges. Beyond this point, it's known as V4. It terminates by joining up with the contralateral vertebral artery to become the basilar artery, just here on the basilar portion of the occipital bone. We'll talk about the branches first, and then we'll finish with a discussion about the anatomic relations of the vertebral artery. To begin with, as it courses alongside the vertebral col column here, it gives off a number of spinal branches, which contribute to the arterial supply of these vertebral bodies as well as a bit of their surrounding tissue and also contributes to the supply of the spinal cord itself. Of course runs through the spinal column just here. And this supply that the spinal branches offer complement the supply from these arteries which you can see in here which we'll address uh, a little bit later on. From V2, there's also another branch known as the anterior meningeal artery, which supplies the meninges of the spinal cord to some degree. And then in V3, we have only one branch, the posterior meningeal artery, which does the same. Moving on to V4 now, we have three different distinct and very important branches. We have the posterior inferior cerebellar artery, which curves posteriorly and inferiorly to supply the inferior aspect of the cerebellum. We then have the anterior spinal artery, which departs from both vertebral arteries and joins together to form one long branch. And then we have the posterior spinal arteries as well. Now, interestingly, these two, as well as the anterior spinal artery, descend all the way down the spinal column, terminating with the posterior spinal artery at the conus medullaris, which is around here. And for the anterior spinal artery, the termination point is all the way down here in the sacrum. So blood supplying that region via the anterior spinal artery is coming all the way from the vertebral artery inside the skull cavity. Okay, next let's talk about the anatomical relations of the vertebral artery, muscles, veins, nerves, and lymphatics. Let's begin with the lymphatics because they're the simplest. This is the thoracic duct on the left-hand side, which curves across quite close to the origin of the vertebral artery, and the lymphatic duct on the right. We have the anterior scalene muscle forming a lateral border, and then the inferior oblique part of the longus colli muscle forming a, a medial, a kind of medial border for the vertebral artery here. So this is the longus colli muscle, which contributes to flexion of the neck. And there's the vertebral artery here, curving around just lateral to it. As it enters the transverse foramina, it joins up with the vertebral vein, which abuts it posteriorly. And immediately posterior to that, we have the spinal nerves departing the spinal canal. As we continue up the cervical vertebrae, we can see the meninges here, and we see the vertebral artery piercing them from V3 here to V4 after it has pierced those meninges. If we enter the skull cavity now, we can see the cerebellum. And if we remove the cerebellum, we see the posterior inferior cerebellar arteries. And just here, we see the medulla the vertebral artery contributes to the arterial supply of. And on the anterior aspect of the medulla, we have the departure point of the hypoglossal nerve. 
which curves over the vertebral artery like so. And that's it for the anatomy, branches and relations of the vertebral artery. I hope you enjoyed that and we'll see you in the next video.